Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Arts. So today in this video, we are going to learn about R programming. So as you might have heard about Python being used for data analytics, R similarly is a statistical programming language which is used for performing data analytics tasks. So whenever you want to manipulate data, perform operations on data, R is where it comes into picture. So basically, R programming, as you might know, it, R is also an object-oriented programming language. So everything in R is having classes and objects. And R provides a wide variety of statistical, that is linear and non-linear modeling, classical statistical tests and so on for you. So in this video, we are going to discuss about R, having an introduction to R. Then we'll be learning about how to install and download the R environment, basically the R studio. So R Studio is an ID for R. We are going to learn how to use R Studio. We are going to have a look into the different data structures present in R, the different kinds of operations which can be performed in R, some kinds of functions which are already present in R and the functions which are already present in R are called as the predefined or inbuilt functions. So we'll have a look at the inbuilt functions of R and something called as a user defined functions, which are the functions which can be created or defined by you. We're going to learn about those as well. And then after doing that, we're going to have a program demonstration, like simultaneously while explaining you the theory, I'll be explaining you practically how the different programs can be used um, and basically how you can uh, make your own functions in R so that in order to solve different problem statements, we'll also have a look into some built-in data sets, data structures, and then, uh, then in this way, you will get a complete picture about how R can be used to program. So this is the R official documentation page, as you can see here. Uh, you can just go to rproject.org about.html. This is our official documentation page. Any kind of help you would need uh, about knowing about R, it is all documented here very clearly. So if you go to CRAN here, it is CRAN is where you will get to understand how to download and install R. It's CRAN is the package you have to install firstly. Uh, to use R and then there is about R. If you go to about R, the information about R will be present and R blog is some of the blogs you can find about R. If you want any help about, for any function which is present in R, you can go and go to this getting help, uh, getting help and making use of the help command or the question mark followed by the function name. Suppose you want to know what is this RLM function about. So when you type question mark followed by the function name lm or rlm, it was going to show you some content about the function. In this way, it will help you understand what are the different features of the function and also where the function is used, giving you some examples as well. So this is some documentation you can go through for yourself to learn and understand about R. Now let's understand firstly that uh, before beginning, I would like to also show you uh, to get started with, I would like to explain you firstly what is R. So, pro it's as it's uh, said here that programming language and software environment for statistical computing and reports. So, you should understand that R is a statistical programming language. Any kind of data analytics, data manipulation capability, the statistics and analytics algorithms can be done and implemented by making use of the R programming language. Now, some people get very confused as to they should go with Python, Scala or Rust or they should use R for statistical programming and uh, or the data analytics. You can, of course, use Python as well. There is no, uh, uh, there is nothing like uh, R is better or Python is better. It all depends on your requirements. But the main uniqueness about R programming is that R will help you a lot to solve any kind of statistical and graphical techniques. So basically, whenever you want to perform data visualization by making use of graphs and plotting graphs by uh, to, in order to visualize and get insights of data, R is the first and the foremost language which will come into the picture. So R, as you know, any programming language has conditional statements, loops, user-defined because of functions, input, output facilities. We have all these present in R as well. So it, uh, you can use, uh, R can be used basically in two ways we will be seeing. This is the R Studio, which I will be opening now, as you can see here in my screen. 
that uh, it has four panes this is the editor pane which is called here this is art studio and uh, this is the editor pane this is called as the console window or your output pane so whatever you are executing and writing in your editor pane you can directly write commands in the console also you need not use the editor pane but then when you are writing in the editor pane or in the console window the output will be shown in the terminal i mean the console here this is the console window or the output window and this is the environment basically this is having the environment pane where all your variables will be stored and whatever values you are going to assign in your workspace our workspace will be shown here so what exactly is our workspace our workspace is the area present in r where it has all the variables and the, their corresponding values you are using in your environment this is the thing but the uh, all the uh, variables you have created since uh, i have not created any variables but previously i was working on a uh, our program over here and uh, whatever variables i had used everything is reflected in this workspace in this environment of yours and then this is the finally the uh, basically the help view i am going to but you can go to files as well to know what all the different files are present in your system the plots where all your any kind of plotting you are doing will be presented as a graph here so these four are the panes of our studio you can see how interactive gui it is gui is graphical user interface so you can see how convenient and user friendly this kind of our environment is for you to code and write our programs so definitely you can make use of this r studio by installing and downloading it i'll also be explaining you how and uh, how that can be done but basically you can make use of gui called r studio or command line interface also will work command line interface is similar to r uh, console so if you forget that you have these three panes here for a second and this one you just focus on this console or the terminal window so what uh, is something like a command line interface where you do not have any gui present or a graphical user interface present you just have to write all your commands present in this window as well so you can also implement our programs either in the command line another way is that as you may know for any programming language you have online compilers so similarly for r as well i'm just going to this one a uh, simple online compiler which is program is you can go to any compiler and this is basically a online compiler where all your uh, executions of programs can also be done say you are uh, this is the way you are assigning something to message so you can use equal to also to assign hello world to message or similarly you can use this less less than symbol followed by hyphen that will be assigning hello world to message and to print message on running this button you will be getting the output over here hello world so this is just a online compiler which i just opened for you to show a demo uh, as to how you can use different uh, ways and different platforms in order to execute our programs so one way is the online compiler the other way is the gui called the r studio and the other one is the command line interface so if uh, you have to understand that whatever programs you are making in r that is saved with an extension of dot r so that is the uh, like the extension in which the r programs are saved and it's very active community and a package contributions present in r so let's delve into the history of r firstly because before uh, i would like to delve into all the features of r and the various data structures what all can be done with r the functions loops and all the programming aspects of r let me first give you a brief about the history so as you can see on my screen 1991 is when this is the year when r was created and r was created in new zealand by ross ihaka and robert gentleman their experience in developing r is documented in a 1996 JCGS paper then we have 1993 the first announcement of r to the public initially r was made private in 1991 when it was created and from 1993 it was announced as public then finally you have 1995 1996 with different re, uh, evolutions of r took place or the advancements in the pro, uh, development of r took place and after licensing it to make r as a free software as well 1997 there was a core group which was formed which controlled the source code for r then from 2000 our versions were starting to develop so our version 1.0.0 was released in 2000 2013 you had 3.0.2 version which was released on december 2013 and in 2015 you had our version 3.2.1 being released on june 18 2015 so this was brief about the history as you can see as to which years and how exactly r came up developed first initially it was created in 1991 followed by different versions were created was made public a free software as well open source and then the different versions were created
So uh, in 2015, it was 3.2.1, but definitely even after 2015 till date, you are having a lot of updates in the versions present in R. So the R Studio, which I am using is three uh, is over here. You can see the version R 4.1.0 is the version I'm using. So definitely, this is also an outdated version though. Uh, like you have a 4.2 or 4.3 also coming up. So it also came up, 4.2 is also there. But uh, R4.1.0 is a version I'm using. So as you can see, there are a lot of versions present in the package of R and a lot of developments have been made. And the new versions have the new features. Uh, although till 4.1, I would recommend you if you're practicing R, 4.0 or 4.1 will do. Even if you have R 4.0, that will also be completely fine as the packages are there. But the most and more advanced kind of uh, libraries and functions for data visualization and statistical analysis may not be present or some of the built-in data sets may not be present. So it's recommended to always go with the newer versions. Now let's learn about interacting with R. If you want to interact with R, how exactly can be done? So as I've told you, you can R uh, for starters, it can be done using R Studio, which is an integrated development environment, or using a DID user, which is a graphical user interface. And for more advanced users, you can either go with Eclipse, Stat, E, then uh, Vim, which is the which is a very good uh, text editor, you know, especially for syntax highlighting, code completing, auto code completion, and all such features. Even for R, you can use Vim, then Emacs plus ESS or bundled Emacs plus ESS. These are some of the good text editors which you can use for R. And for starters, R Studio is the best, which I'll be explaining you through a demo. All the programs and any kind of live demo which I'll be showing you, I'll be doing it over here itself in the R Studio. So uh, this was all about it and how, in which ways you can interact with R. So through command line interface, now what you, you might have, uh, now you might have heard about command line interface versus R Studio. So which one is better you think? To put it simple, I would say R Studio is the best and it is more convenient because this kind of GUI which you are seeing on my screen will not be present in a R uh, command line interface. Command line interface will just have a single console window like this without any features like, you know, file button, edit and or everything it's like a GUI or in more interaction with R or more convenience will not be present. So R Studio is more user friendly, I would say. So if you go to this, let me just uh, take you through the features of R Studio. Firstly, uh, I will explain you how to install and download as well, but then just explaining you what are the different features. As you can see, the basic features for now, this is the file window where you can create your new file. So if you go to file and go to new file, you can create your R basically R, I uh, write programs as R script. So on clicking on R script by making use of control plus shift plus N, a new R script will be open. So what I'm writing here, this is nothing but the R script only. This is R script. So you can see this is also, it's, everything is going to be saved with dot R extension. This is R script in an editor window or uh, editor pane for R where you can go keep on editing your uh, programs. So, this was our script. You can also make use of our notebook to write our programs in a notebook, our markdown and C++ file, so on. These are the different ways in which you can create a new file in R. So this is uh, going to the edit where you have all, as usual, we have all the edit functions here, cut, copy, paste and so on. Then for the code, whenever you want to, like any ID, you know, that even like you must have heard about Java Eclipse ID or uh, Python and even you have for web development and other purposes, you would have heard about the VS Code ID. So any any ID will have these features of code, view, plots, um, view, session and so on. Similarly, plot, uh, plots is something because R is a statistical and a data visualization language. You have plot section as well. Then session in order to quit the session, you can either go with this Q command. Q followed with a parenthesis to quit R Studio. Otherwise, simply just going to the quit session will just do the work for you. Clear workspace is where you want to clear all your local variables here. You can either go and uh, make use of the brush symbol here. As you can see here, this is the brush symbol. On clicking this, all the variables will be created, deleted. You can go with that also. Set working directory is where you want to uh, see working directory is something where you are currently working or the path. So you can change your working directory to a different path by choosing it over here. As shown, restart our terminate our. And if you want to create a new session altogether, you can go to new session here. Debug profile tools and help. Our help is the most... Uh, a uh, useful and resourceful tool, I would say, because whenever you are stuck, because R has uh, innumerable functions, there are like a lot of functions having uh, serving different purposes. So whenever you are stuck with a different function or some kind of help is required for you to learn about uh, some kind of built-in data set, then you can go with R help. As I've told, R help will, uh, or just using the help command, that will give you a gist about the 
uh, what kind of uh, the perform uh, what kind of role the function is going to perform so let me show you how you can clear the variables present in your R. you can just simply go to this brush symbol here and it asks you confirm remove objects a prompt or a message will be shown to you are you sure you want to remove all objects from the environment this operation cannot be undone because it's like a permanent uh, kind of operation. So uh, when you click on yes, all the, en the environment will be empty and all your workspace variables will be deleted. So this is the way you can, uh, you know, click the brush symbol in order to clear the objects from your workspace. So now that you've understood about the R Studio, you would have you would see here like simple console for running R scripts. It provides a simple console and it's also very simple uh, text editor and output of plots. You can see in the plot section here uh, on my screen that any kind of data visualization and form of plots can also be shown to you. And R, uh, on the other hand, command line interface is not very comfortable, but R Studio is very user friendly. So that's why usage of ID is highly recommended. Now, a quick introduction, as I've told you, there are four panes in our R Studio. And uh, you would see the first one is the edit editor pane to write your R code. The second one is the console for code execution and output of results. The third pane is for the environment history and version control. That is for managing and tracking all your variables along with their values you have assigned. So whatever you're making use in your editor pane or in your uh, output, that will be shown and displayed to you in your environment history and version control. Then this is your uh, last pane where you have any kind of help files and packages and plots you're needing. This will be shown. So you can see here on my screen as well, the editor pane. This is the console. This is the environment pane. And this is the any kind of help files packages you need. This will be the pane, the last pane for that. So now that you've uh, understood that what uh, R Studio is comprising of and the layout, which is very flexible and can be adjusted of R Studio, let's understand and delve into using R as a calculator. Now, before starting and jumping into the different functions, let me show you that uh, what are the different actually the functions present in R. So the functions which are present in R are categorized into two. They are built in functions and they are user defined functions. So built in functions, the functions where uh, you know, any kind of uh, you, you want to just uh, explore the functions which are already built in for you perform, and they are already provided by R for you. You need not like define the name to a function. They are already having a name and R is a case sensitive language. So they have to be used accordingly. Now, when I say case sensitive, as you might know that Java is also case sensitive. And so is Python, C++. So case sensitive implies that the uppercase or the alphabets which are uh, you know, uh, capital letters are treated as capital and small is treated as small. So let's understand using R as a calculator. R can be used for performing a lot of mathematical calculations and statistical computations as well. So when I say 2 plus 2, 4 will be returned as output. Similarly, the simple functions as well can be done here. So uh, before jumping into the uh, more... Uh, uh, mathematical calculations which can be done with R, basic static points to R is that the commands are separated by either the... Um, uh, the semicolon or by a new line. So whenever you are like writing commands, you can either write a new line for them or you can separate them with a semicolon as well. I'll be showing you the demo also. R is case sensitive as I've told and whenever you encounter any error while giving a prompt and so on, plus will be the symbol shown to you. And for your help, any kind of help you need with functions in order to access the uh, help, you can do that by making use of question mark followed by the function name or by making use of the help command. Now, why is R exactly object-oriented programming language? Because R stores any kind of data and output from our data analysis, it is going to store as objects. So whatever data you're providing or the output is, you know, displayed by R programming language, that is going to be stored as object in the form of object. So that is why R is called as an object-oriented programming language. And to assign and to store values in objects are uh, less than uh, symbol this one less than and followed by hyphen or equality operator can be used as assignment operators as you know there are different kinds of operators like assignment operator logical operator relational operator for serving different purposes uh, in order to assign a, vari a variable some data you can make use of the equality symbol as this now i've already explained you about our workspace and uh, what all how uh, you can create objects are created using our session and hold in memory and whenever you are like restarting your R studio you will always see that workspace loaded from our data this is what you can see here on my screen as well so whatever i was performing before in my R studio that all will workspace and the variables will be loaded 
from that. And that is why you can see here workspace loaded from uh, our data dot our data. So in this way, uh, the works, the variables will be loaded from the memory itself. So that was all about it. Now let's go and understand, let's understand something about uh, before getting into the R workspace. I would like to give you a gist about how functions are working. The inbuilt functions I was talking about. So uh, before uh, doing that, built-in functions are something like square, mean, max. In order to give a ma get the maximum of the function, you can get make use of the max command, the min mean command to get the mean or the average of the variables of, of the fun of the uh, numbers, and sq for the square. So to understand that, let me give you an example. For example, say you want to find the sum of numbers uh, 4 to 6. So for doing that, you have to use sum as a command here. So, so you can also write print. So let me just start with the most basic command, which is a print command. So say you want to print any string now. Let's say hello world because that's the most common one. So on printing this simply by running this button, click on run, you will see the output in the console or the output pane here. So this editor pane is for you to write commands. You can also write commands in the console itself and run them here as well. But then whenever you want to write a bigger and a larger program like this, a lengthier one, then editor pane comes into handy because you cannot write everything over here line by line in your uh, output window. Although you can do that for one single command, uh, like, you know, line by line. But then whenever you want to execute this entire script of R together at the same time, simultaneously, then you can just uh, control and click everything and then go and click the run button, which will then run everything simultaneously, all your lines simultaneously. And then the output will be displayed in the console below here. This is the console. So as expected in our R script, when we write print hello world, hello world has been printed. Now let's say you want to find the sum. So let's say you can do either print sum or simply sum will also work. So when you do print sum of 4 to 6, 4 is the starting number and 6 is the ending number in our case. So basically when you want to find the sum of the numbers from 4 to 6, what are the numbers in 4 to 6? 4, 5 and 6. So 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. So the output expected output should, output should be uh, 15. So 4 plus 5 plus 6 should be 15 and as expected you can see the output over here displayed as 15. Now let's say you want to find the uh, maximum. The maximum of the numbers from 4 to 6. This is some of the basic commands which I'm just demonstrating for you. So these are inbuilt functions. So see you can see sum, max, min. Of course you can write them as user defined functions or you can make new uh, own functions giving your own names as well and write the program logic into that inside that function which we'll be seeing how to create user defined functions. But before doing that let's make use of the built in functions already which simplify our task and uh, we can reuse the function for codes again and again. So whenever you want to find the maximum, this is the command. Max of 4 to 6 will give 6 because out of 4 and 6, the maximum is 6. Now say you want to find the minimum of numbers 4 and 6. So instead of max, you can just write min 4 to 6. On doing this, you will see that the minimum of the numbers 4, 4 and 6, uh, 4 is the minimum and that will be displayed as output as expected in your. So that was all about it in order to use uh, some of the, you know, uh, the, the inbuilt functions. So these are nothing but uh, the already uh, provided by R to you. You can make use of print and similarly, other than print, you can also make use of the cat functions and the other functions. And if you want, if you're stuck with anything, you can just make use of the help function. Let me show you how. Help and say you want to find the, um, you want to know what is this max function about. So you will understand that what is this max function. Our documentation will be showed to you in the help window over here. I was explaining you in this window of yours. You will see everything. It is taken from the R documentation only. I was demonstrating in the start of the video. What is this R documentation? You can just go to this R project.org, which is nothing but in order to, it is, uh, provides you an entire, uh, hist uh, you know, entire uh, detailed explanation about variables in R, what exactly you can make uh, use of the features of R basically. So whenever you are uh, having any doubt on using this help command, it will just take the matter from the documentation for you and will be explaining you the usage of that command, the arguments, the details, followed by the value note and also give you some examples as to where that function will come handy. So when you, when I say max, it is uh, min max, this is a way in which you can 
uh, you know, pass in one single argument, you can pass in double arguments as colon as well. So colon is basically to separate your starting number and the ending number or basically to separate two numbers. You can make use of that. And also we'll be explaining you into detail as to different functions which come in handy along with min and max. So that was all about it where you're using built-in functions. Uh, getting back to the theory, uh, our workspace. So get WD is to print your working directory. Now working directory is basically where you have downloaded and installed R in your environment, R in your uh, system. So when I just say get WD, what is going to give me is, it's going to give me the path or basically the, uh, the path or the, the directory where my uh, the folder basically where my R Studio has been installed. So I've installed my C drive, it is showing C. If you have installed your R and R Studio in your D drive, it will show the path corresponding path for you with D drive. So uh, you also you can, since it's the editor pane, you can you have to understand that everything what you're writing here can be cleaned as well. You can just click everything at once, go to backspace and just delete everything. So it's the editor pane for you where you can update, modify your variables and so on. But the same cannot be done in the console it will give you an error uh, if you want to do that you cannot do it in the console so that is why editor pane comes into picture when you're writing a, a lengthy code of r and a lot of updations variations in the program has to be done now one one commands definitely you can write in your console and see the output in your console window so that was all uh, get wd which will give you the get working directory wd stands for working directory so that is why it's printing the current working directory or the path for you now what is this ls command ls command is to list the objects in the current workspace so in your current workspace whatever objects you have those will be listed so now for now we have cleared all the um, work, all the uh, variables in the workspace so it is not going to show you anything it will just give you a zero or saying that yeah, it shows you character and zero because there are no objects present in your workspace currently. But then, sir, for example, say you are assigning some objects, say A equal to 9. Then you will see the variable A is going to be shown in your environment section here. Let me minimize this help window now. Yeah, in this environment variable, you will see A followed by the value which is assigned to it. This is the way you can use assignment operator. You can use equality. You can also make use of the less than followed by hyphen symbol and then you're assigning 7 to B. So you can see here B is over here and a value of 7 is assigned to B. Now you want to find the sum of A and B or simply just say print or you need not even print it. You can just write A plus B and see 9 plus 7 is going to give you 16. So that will be the output here, 16. We are not storing 16 into some variable. That is why it's not going to update your workspace with a, another variable. Had you write, written it like C equal to A plus B and then printed C, it's going to write a variable here as C followed by the variable 16, uh, the value of the variable 16 there. Now you want to, for example, clear your uh, console. In order to do that, you can just go to control plus L command. Control plus L will clear your console. You can do this as much times you want. So in order to make your workspace clean, if you're not using it, you can just uh, go to cons uh, in the console window, just type uh, control plus L. So control plus L command is for clearing your console. So this is the command lists the objects in the current workspace. Now, since we have like two uh, variables already, A and B, or two objects. Now, if we make use of the ls command and see, it should give us the list basically. ls stands for list. So, it will list us the variables present or the objects present in our R workspace. So, on clicking this, you will see or, or executing this ls command, you will see A and B as the two objects present in your R workspace or your environment currently. Now, what is set wd my directory? If you want to change your directory to a new directory, the new directory name has to be provided into the uh, argument or the parameter to the set wd method and that will be used for changing into your directory. Now, set wd c docs my dir, it's for viewing and setting options for the session. This we can use now. These are, uh, but since we, we, I, I, we are not like, um, right now, we are not making use of the uh, directory. Basically, we don't want to change the directory. So we can just make, uh, go ahead with making use of the current directory as well. But in case if you want to set your directory, you can make use of the set WD command as well. Uh, so now that you understood the set WD command and so on, 
let's move on to data types in r so what are the different data types in r is you know data types are nothing but the means to identify the type of data in r so there are two types of data classified on a very broad level and the two types of data types in r are numeric data type and character data type so numeric data type are all dealing with numbers like 0 to 9 and also the negative sign numbers the negative positive numbers and zero included these are the numeric data whereas on the other hand everything apart from your numeric data which is something like strings or something a text data that is considered as a character data so data is classified as quantitative and qualitative quantitative are everything dealing with numbers or digits like 1 2 3 are quantitative data and good bad etc are the text of the variables so text of the strings so they are qualitative data so although we can convert qualitative data into quantitative data using ordinal values for example good can be rated as 9 while average can be rated as 5 and bad can be rated as 0 these are the different ways in which you can convert your qualitative data to the quantitative data this way in which we can deal with data so you know that r is all dealing with data so data has to be very clean now when we talk about data analytics you might know that data cleaning is a very important process in r or in any process in data analytics pipeline similarly you have to ensure that before performing some more data operations using r programming language on your data your data first has to be clean and the very like in you must have uh, known in uh, python there is a uh, i would just uh, draw an analogy and uh, analogy and compare it with python language uh, so that it be easier for you to understand if you know python so if you know python uh, the in order to store your data there is something called as data frame similarly in r also you have data frame to store any kind of data sets now what is this data data can be structured data unstructured data so on so as uh, if i just go to my r studio you will see that if you go to file section and then you can go to uh, import data set now data Data, if on clicking on import data set you will see data can be imported or loaded from text uh, which is a base form readr from excel as well so from excel the data will be in the form of uh, tables because excel stores uh, the data in the form of tables so it can be structured data so you can load and structure data as well in r and uh, data of course will be having a lot of outliers in it or say it's having something very redundant some missing values so how to replace those null values or those uh, missing values what can be done with that that is where your data cleaning will come into picture and you can impute those values basically by performing imputations or base imputation is nothing but replacing your missing value or your null value with a new value and that new value can be a mean median mode standard deviation or any statistical measure so what is data basically from data we extract information so information is nothing but meaningful data meaningful data which will help us to perform data analysis uh data analytics and basically data is can be raw data as well and data is nothing but a group of facts which may or may not be correct they may or may not be meaningful so this is nothing but data so data is nothing but factual information used as a basis for reasoning discussion or calculation so these are some of the definitions in which you can understand how data analytics can be done using r programming language so for say uh, 92 is example of data because it's not making any sense it's just a number that is 92 is a data but then when you are using the data to provide some meaning to the users by saying like number of students who registered for the course so and so in fall semester is 92 now this is making some sense to us so that is why it's considered as information that is where exactly r can be used for performing data analytics in order to extract insights from your data to make better decision making so decision making can be exactly this was some gist about data analytics uh, i would like to give you so that you can understand how uh, data analytics is very much important in today's world for performing a lot of variety of tasks and how r comes into play for performing data analysis so data analytics is basically science of analyzing raw data in order to make conclusions about that information so it it implies uh, inspecting cleansing transforming and modeling your data i'll also be explaining you how transformation is done transformation is nothing but normalizing your data you can use standard scalar or basically scale your data related to something using min max normalization or some other transformation techniques transformation is nothing but converting from one form to another form of your data then you can build models for your data building models is nothing but building predictive models of using whatever information you have to make predictions so that was all about it data analytics applications in different areas these are some of the n number of areas where data analytics have a lot of applications so coming to r again r installation i would like to show you first uh, in order you can install uh, download and install r from the r uh, 
CRAN I was showing you in the R documentation as well, the CRAN package, or to install R Studio. Like I have this one, uh, to download and install your R Studio, you have to go to this particular link. You can make a take a note of this link uh, for your reference. HTTP R Studio products R Studio download. Uh, on just clicking this, I'm taking you to that link now. You will, uh, it'll take you to this link. Now in this link, it says R Studio Desktop. Uh, now, R, if you are using Windows or uh, Linux or any operating system, corresponding to that operating system, how R is to be downloaded and installed, it will be shown to you in this particular site. So whenever you want to install R, you just have to click uh, download and install R is the button you have to click. So R Studio, which requires R 3.3.0 plus, and you can choose your version of R in order to match your computer's operating system OS. So uh, basically R requires, a, it's a more uh, recommended if you can uh, install and download R on your 64-bit operating system. That is more better and has uh, having a lot of functionalities. Many more features are extended. But if you are having a 32-bit operating system, no worries. R can be also be downloaded and installed on a 32-bit operating system. But um, in order to install R, you can just go and uh, download this. So download and install R will open an exe file for you. As you know, while installing any software or app application, that is the exact process where uh, on clicking this, the uh, basically the on clicking that the exe file will be downloaded. So download. R Studio Desktop for Windows. On clicking this, you will see a exe file which will get downloaded for you. And then on clicking that exe file, then after downloading, you can go go and click on the installer. So corresponding to that installer, you can basically install R Studio in any of your directory. You can go and install in your C C drive, D drive, or any path you want to install R into. So it requires, you should note that it requires a 64-bit operating system. If you are a 32-bit system, you can use an older version of R Studio. So these are some of the operating systems followed by the download. Uh, these are some of the extensions for you. First, you have to download and then you have to go to the exe file and then click on install in order to uh, install your uh, R Studio. So it's, this is the approximate size it will take. Uh, it is not going to take much uh, larger size, it's just in MBs. So it's going to um, take this much amount of space on your des uh, des desktop or your laptop and then R Studio will be installed for you. So now that you have understood how our installation about R, a brief history and an introduction to R and why exactly R is used to perform statistics and data analytics and also have seen a practical demonstration about uh, some of the built-in functions of R, right? So now let us understand some what is exactly the functions present in R or let's say, uh, let's go to functions basically firstly since i have started with functions uh, let us understand what exactly is a function so function is nothing but as you know in any programming language it is a set of statements organized together to perform a specific task r has a large number of inbuilt functions and the user can create their own functions so they are they can be either inbuilt functions or you can have the user defined functions in r as well so in r a function is an object is an uh, r function is nothing but it's an object so the r interpreter is able to pass control to the function so uh, this is nothing but the theory about it. Now going to the function. This is the way in which a function, user defined function is created. We have seen how uh, the, uh, the inbuilt functions can be used in R. But what about the user defined function? User defined function is where this way in which you can make use of them. So function name follow, uh, followed by function name and assign it to the function keyword. This is this has to not change. But the function name can be changed by you. They can be customized by you. So you can give any name to your function. Say whenever you are finding any area of a rectangle or say uh, sum of two numbers, you can name the function as sum. And then followed by this function keyword. So function keyword followed by this and then the arguments of the parameters has to be passed to your function. You can pass in the pa parameters to your function and inside the braces over here, you have to write the body of the function. So body of the function is nothing but having a basically the logic of your program has to be put in. So what are the different function components, the function name, arguments, function body and the return value. Since we know that every function is going to return something or print at least something, the return value of a function is the last expression in the function body to be evaluated. So these are, you can just go through this to understand what exactly is it common to any programming language. You have these parts, right? You have any function will have the function name, arguments, function body and return value. Similarly, in R also, this is the way in which you can define functions. We'll be looking into practically how exactly user defined functions can be um, created in R. So 
Now, built-in function, we have, made, uh, we have understood some of the built-in functions. Let us also delve into some more built-in functions. So, uh, sequence. So, whenever you want to basically create a sequence of numbers from 32 to 50, 44, you can just write SEQ, which is a built-in function, and then it will create a sequence for you. This will be output. All the numbers starting from 32 to 44 will be displayed as output for you. So, let us like, you know, for understand and then uh, use all these uh, functions now so for example uh, mean of the numbers as i've already explained you mean of two numbers can be done by making use of the mean command here and mean 25 to 82 mean of the numbers from 25 to 82 will be displayed and that is 53.5 mean is nothing but the average it's a statistical uh, measure so it's nothing but the average that is sum of all the numbers uh, from 25 to 82 divided by the num total number of numbers. Find the sum of the numbers from 41 to 60, uh, 68. Sum was the command as we had seen before. Sum on doing this, it will sum all the numbers from 41 to 68. If you want me to implement these inbuilt functions for you, let me do that. Uh, go to the editor pane and over here you can see this. For example, instead of we were like, you know, one by one uh, executing each function. Now, instead of one by one executing each of your uh, uh, function, you can just control and click or everything. You can just select all the lines of your editor pane and then together run them by making use of the run command. So, in this way, everything will be simultaneously. All the uh, commands, basically all the lines of your R uh, program or your R script will be executed uh, at the same time. So you will see that the sequence of the numbers from 32 to 44 will be over here. The mean of that will be this and the sum of the numbers from 41 to 68 will be shown here. So this is the way in which you can basically uh, in which you can basically create the sequence of numbers, find the sum of them, mean of them and in this way it can be used in order to basically uh, it was a demo for you to understand how built-in functions work. Now, let's go to the user-defined functions. Now, before I would like to go and explain and start practically the user-defined functions, let me give you an example. Uh, let me uh, help you understand what is the uh, built-in data sets. We have seen built-in functions in R, but I've also told you that R has uh, some built-in data sets for you to work. Now, what is data set? Data set is nothing but a... Uh, uh, basically, they are nothing but sample data which is provided by R for you. In Python, you have Iris data set also as already inbuilt. Similarly, in R also, there is Iris data and the common data sets which are made free for you to use. If you, in case you are lacking any data with you and you want to just learn R and explore, perform data analysis on that, you can make use of the inbuilt data sets provided by R to you and perform all your mathematical or your uh, manipulations on using R with that data set. So if you see this cloth size dot csv, this is a cloth size csv is a user defined. It's nothing but a data set which I am providing. This is not the R data set. So whenever you are uh, like you know importing or loading a data set which you have and it is not part a part of your R environment or from the R studio, then you have to make use of read dot csv. Read dot csv is the command to read your data or basically load your data set into the R workspace. So cloth size dot csv is the data set I was working on previously. So that is why I was just like to show you this command and df is a data frame. So data frame is a data structure in R. Uh, we, we, in the next video, we'll be learning about the data structures present in R and how exactly uh, you can perform basically write a script, perform manipulations using the data structures in R. We learn about lists, tuples, uh, factors, data frames and the other kinds of data structures which are present in R. Then we'll be looking into the complex and advanced programs which can be done using R. Uh, in order for you to understand how logic can be built. But in this video, I would like to first explain you what is built in R uh, data sets. How can you load data into R studio? Then I will also be explaining you user defined functions which have started. What is user defined functions? Give a demo of that practically. Explain you how you can create your own functions and give your own logic for R. And uh, in the next video, we'll be learning about data structures. So, uh, so this was the command basically. So, read.csv is for you to read your uh, data set into the R Studio. So, the CSV is the uh, format of your data. 
the data I was having is in the CSV file. So data can be in the basically in any file. It can be an Excel format or a TXT form or a text form can also be the extension for your data. It can be any form of data. And these are the other again the inbuilt functions. Summary of DF will give you a summary basically. Summary is nothing but an overview of your data. As you know that exploratory data analysis or EDA is one important part of your machine learning or data analytics pipeline where you are exploring the attributes of your data uh, like the head, the tail, what is the top view, uh, top view the bottom level level view of your data and so on. So everything uh, will be shown to you and summary will also give you all kinds of statistical measures for your data, something like your mean of your data, max and so on. This is the function we have created. This is a user defined function here. Normalize is the name of the function we are given. I was talking about transforming data, right? So transforming data is nothing but normalizing data where you're converting data into some format which you like. So that format we are making use of the min max over here min max uh, scaling or min max normalization is a type of normalization uh, in which we are going to scale our features or scale our attributes relative to the minimum and maximum of the data attributes so we are uh, the function over here in it's enclosed inside the braces that is the function body and the function is going to return this format and then uh, these are uh, nothing but print command over here is used for printing your output and so on and again, you have a function called as rotate matrix where I'm making use of function. Uh, this is a function because whenever you identify, how do you identify a function basically? Function is nothing but having a return statement and it's also having parameters assigned to it. So we'll be learning about how to create user-defined functions and all. This was just some, uh, some kind of a skimming of a code which I'm doing for you to uh, get acquainted with functions, user-defined functions. Now, about talking, coming to the built-in data sets in R. Now, if you want to understand what are the exactly the, uh, you know, you want to basically list, uh, you want to get a list of preloaded data sets. You can, you have to make use of the data command here. So data followed by your opening parenthesis and closing parenthesis will give you all a list of all the data sets which are present in R. So on just clicking this command and running it, all the R data sets will be shown and displayed to you as a list. You will see here like air passengers, which is nothing but the monthly airline passenger numbers and so on. These are all the data sets which are provided by R to you. These are preloaded. You will see Iris is the data set here. Edgar Anderson's Iris data. Then you have something, a very common one, which will be working empty cars data set. Empty cars data set is somewhere over here. Yes, empty cars over here. It is motor trend car roads test. So these are different data sets which are loaded already in the R studio for you. So this is like, uh, you can make use of those data sets. Now, now that you have understood R is giving a list of so many data sets for you to use, how exactly can you make use of that? So for example, say you want to load the empty cars data set or the Iris data set. So Iris is too, too common, right? So let's go with empty cars data set. So for example, if you want to load empty cars data set, click go in order to load your data into your R studio. This is a command data followed by the name of the data set and the name of the data set should be enclosed in parenthesis or should be enclosed as an argument or a parameter to your data. So data followed by this on clicking run, you will see empty cards as the data which is uh, loaded in your environment. You can see here and then uh, after doing that, Keep going to the head, you can uh, also to get an overview of your data. Basically, I was telling about the head, head command, right? So printing the first six rows of your data, this is the command head followed by the empty cards. That is the name of your data set. Then name of the data set empty cards followed by six. This will return the top six rows of your empty cards data set. So basically printing the first six rows. So on doing this, you will see that the uh, basically the top level view of your data will be shown to you. Basically, the top six rows of your data set will be shown to you and of your empty cars data set. So you can see head followed by empty cars comma six. So head of empty cars comma six. So you can see the top six rows of your empty cars data set being displayed here. These are nothing but the attributes of the columns of your data set. The columns of the data set over here. On the right hand side in the environment, you will see 32 observations of 11 variables. So 32 observations. Observations are nothing but the number of rows. So the number of rows in your data set are 32. And the number of columns in your data set are 11. As you can see here, 11 variables. 
so head similarly if you want to get the tail or the uh, the bottom level view of your data you can just pass in your data set name to the tail command followed by six if this will give you the the uh, the bottom six rows of your data so on using the tail command you will see the bottom six rows of your data set over here data set you're using is empty card so six is the number you're specified if you want to find uh, five or four you can <coughs> sorry you can mention the number accordingly and you will get the number of the rows on the number of number of rows starting basically the top six rows the, the bottom six rows accordingly so now that you've understood this, if you want to get help about the data, if you want to understand that what is that data about, you can make use of the question mark followed by the empty cars. This command will give you a brief overview about what is the empty cars data set about. So motor trend car road test. This is the data set. So about the data set description of that will be shown to you in the R help over here. So you will see here in the help view. You can also make use of the help command also as I was showing you. Like if you just type help followed by empty cars. This will give you the basically all the uh, description again uh, of your uh, empty cars data set. So basically describing the data source and some examples as to how you can you make use of different data structures like factor, data frame and so on in order to make use of the empty cars data set and how different data operations can be done. So now that you have understood about uh, the empty cars data set, how exactly we can make use of that. Suppose uh, in order to not use empty cars, you want to load data iris. So if you, so for example, you want to load uh, data iris, you can also do that. Or say you want to, okay, let's do that. Data of iris. This will load iris data set into your workspace. You will see iris into your workspace. And to get a view of your iris data, you can just do head of iris. And you're not specifying any number now. You will by default see five or six rows which are or observations which are uh, displayed to you uh, of the iris data set. So this is your iris data set. You can see here the attributes are sepal.length, width, uh, length, petal.width, petal.length and species. So there are totally five columns. And you will see five variables and nothing but the five columns and 150 observations or 150 rows are present actually in your data set, in your iris data set. So once you have loaded that, in order to get the number of rows or the observations to cross check whether uh, whether it actually has uh, 150 rows as, as it's showing here, in order to do that, you can make use of end row command. So end row followed by iris. End row iris will give you the number of rows. The number of rows is expected as 150 as is shown here 150 observations. It's going to return you 150. Similarly, for, for example, now you don't want to type in your editor window. You want to type in your console window only. You can see that uh, n row. Similarly, n column. You can just give one uh, this command here n column to get the number of columns or variables in your iris data set. So on doing that, just click on enter. You will see five as expected. There are five variables or five columns present in your iris data set. So this was one of the ways in which you can manipulate the data, explore the data and understand the number of rows, the shape of the data, head view of the data and so on. Uh, I hope you have understood how exactly built-in uh, data sets can be used and you can also uh, make use of built-in data sets whenever you're not having any data to perform any data manipulation or technique. So our, in fact, has a list and to know which, uh, you know, for example, uh, you want to for example get some data but there is no time for you to manipulate that so you can just go to data and then list from the list of all the preloaded data sets you can choose any of your data set you want to work on and perform your data analytics on that so that was all about the practical demonstration now coming back to our user defined functions so in the user defined function we, uh, basically we can create user defined functions in r and that is nothing but specific to what your user wants or the user wants. So this is the way in which we are creating a function to print squares of numbers in sequence. So the this A over here is a number. So you know for loop, while loop, do while loop, right? They are nothing but the different uh, iterative statements. So we are making use of the for loop here. As you can see in the body of your function, we are making use of the for loop. Now in this for loop, basically we are creating a function to print squares of numbers in sequence. So this is the name of the function you're giving. New dot function is the name. And then the function is the keyword you're assigning. 
keyword this function has to be used all the new dot function can be changed accordingly you could write like square underscore number and so on this function is the reserved keyword in r which you have to use in order to while you're creating user defined functions so function followed by a a over here is basically the number you're specifying to generate a sequence so when i say a over here as six as it's shown here calling the function new dot function supplying six as argument it's going to take all the sequence of numbers starting from one to six so one to six what are the numbers one two three four five six so the square of all the individual numbers starting from 1 to 6 will be done and stored in B and it will be uh, printed each time you are executing this uh, function all the numbers starting from 1 to that particular number A which you have provided so in our case if it's 6 so 1 to 6 all the individual numbers will be squared and then we print it over here so when you see the square of the numbers 1 4 9 16 6 uh, 1 4 9 16 25 and 36 these are nothing but the square the squares of the numbers in sequence so now that you have understood how exactly this can be done let me show you the uh, demonstration of this live to you and you have to also understand that whenever you're creating any user defined function it's very important for us to call that function also if you're not calling the function the output will not be generated because the function is only able to return something if it is called so function call or invocation of the function which we say in programming language that has to be done then only you will be getting the output and uh, you will you are seeing here there is an argument there is only a single argument argument is a parameter or an input passed to the function and that is only a single argument you can provide two three or multiple arguments or you can provide no argument also any function you can create different types of functions which we will be seeing later so on clicking this for example Now let's run, uh, you will see that the no output will be printed here. Although we are running this, you will see no output will be printed in this function. So this is one way in which you can create a function. So uh, you can have a look. For some time, I'm just pausing the video. You can have a look as to how exactly we have implemented the different functions and have a, a note about this way in which we can write functions. Please have a note for one minute. I hope you have had a note about uh, how exactly the function is working, the different ways in which you can define the functions in a user defined fashion. So after doing that, you can see that the output is not printed here because you have not called the function. Now in order to call the function, let's change the name of the function to some other function. For example, you can, you can give a different name also. So let's say since you are printing the squares of the numbers, let's say square underscore num is the name of your function. Now if you want to uh, call that function you should write the exactly the name of the function square underscore num and you can provide any argument so now for example let provide the argument of seven now you can run this function entirely you have to run it and you will see the square of all the numbers starting from 1 to 7 will be generated. So you will see 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. These are the squares of all the numbers starting from 1 to 7 will be printed here. And that is only after you call this square num function. So now that you have understood something about how to exactly, you know, create a user defined function, let's also go through creating a function without an argument so this is a function which is not having any argument here and you can similarly make use of the for loop here to run all the numbers or to iterate over all the numbers starting from one to five it's already mentioned here as five in our previous case we have we were mentioning one to a so that is why it was important for us to specify the value of a the user had to specify value of a but there are use cases where the user does not have to specify any value of a already in the function logic only the uh, value will be assigned so in that case you can see here for i in 1 to 5 uh, and printing i square so this way you can uh, basically without even supplying an argument the function can generate the output as required so now let's go to the next case where calling a function with argument values that is by position and by name how can that be done we can create a function with arguments which are multiple also so when you see here a into b plus c print result 
we can call the functions by position of arguments or by names of the arguments also and by names of the arguments is nothing but a equal to 11 by specifying explicitly by their names because the uh, names of the arguments are nothing but a b c and the values are the whatever values you are providing so the arguments can either take directly the values or they can take the names of the variables or the names of the arguments that is a b and c followed by the arguments as well, followed by the values of the arguments as well i am copying this code for the demonstration purpose and showing you how exactly it can be executed in r studio later we'll be delving into how to call a function with default argument then very important uh, you know in programming whenever you're talking about functions there is one concept of lazy evaluation of function which we'll be looking into okay so let me clear this and let's clear this control l let's clear this as well and i will clear the workspace environment variables as well okay so for doing that this is the function now create a function with arguments instead of new dot function you can give any name to the function as i've told so let's give a different name only let's say uh let's say the name is manipulation because we're doing some kind of a mathematical calculation so this named it as manipulation and everywhere whenever you're calling the function the function has to be having the same name so that is why i'm just changing the name as manipulation so calling the function by position of argument so 5 3 11 so whenever you're doing that 5 into 3 is 15 15 plus 11 is what you'll be getting as output 15 plus 11 is nothing but 26 as the output and so calling the function by names of arguments so similarly uh, if you're doing a equal to 11 explicitly specifying and you have to one thing you have to understand is that uh, you can also change the order basically order of arguments can be changed but the function will just call the uh, parameters whenever it is required so the order of the parameters can be changed but in this way we are explicitly specifying what is the value of a b c so on doing this we see that Uh, 11 into 5 is 55. 55 plus 3 is 58. 58 will be your answer, which is to be printed. So let's just run this code. As expected, you will see 26 as the uh, uh, the the value or the output for this manipulation 5311. For this uh, input, this will be the output. And for your input, by giving the names of the arguments as well to the manipulation function, 58 as expected is the output. So this is one way now another one is default argument now what exactly is this default argument as you have seen that in the previous case when we have a defining functions we were not giving assigning the values of the variables that is something about a equal to b b equal to c c equal to z we were not like you know specifying any value or supplying the values to the uh, arguments the basically the variable arguments in the function itself because that time if we do that that would be called as a default argument but we were not making use of the default argument and we were you know asking the user to explicitly specify the arguments while calling the function but what if the user does not specify any value to the function in such case default arguments come into hand handy they come into picture because in that case whenever the user is not providing any value to the arguments the default arguments will be taken up as default default nothing but automatic right so when nothing is provided that is what is going to be taken so when you see this uh they, we are providing default arguments as 3 and 6 and then a into b that is nothing but the product so 3 into 6 is 18 so when the user is not providing any argument some people will think that it will return an error because there is no argument but that will only return an error if no default arguments were specified but since we are specifying that if nothing is provided to a and b by the user like this new function then a will automatically be assigned to the value of 3 and b will be defaultly assigned the value of 6 so 3 into 6 is 18 that will be given as output to you but if the user is specifying the uh, value like you know giving the new value of the argument 9 and 5 the new values will be taken the default values will not be taken but the new values will be taken because the user has supplied the new values to the um function as argument so they are nothing but non default arguments or non default results so 9 into 5 is 45 and you will see 45 is the output of your function that is what is exactly lazy evaluation of function now lazy evaluation of functions nothing but arguments to functions are evaluated lazily which means that 
Uh, they are evaluated only when needed in the function body. This is a very important concept you have to understand in R programming that only when the function body is requiring that function's arguments, then only the arguments to the functions will be evaluated. Otherwise, they will not be evaluated. So when you see creating a function with arguments is A, B. Evaluate the function without supplying one of the arguments. So one of the arguments which is B is not supplied by the user and we don't even have any default value assigned to B. If we were assigning some default value to B, it will not give this error. But then it has no default value like A and B and the, the user is only giving 6 or uh, so the function will understand that 6 is nothing but the A argument. So print A square, print A, print B. So the function will return A square is nothing but 6 square. So 6 square is 36, 36 will be returned as output of the first print command, print statement. This next, this, uh, next print statement is going to print the value of A, so which is 6 here, but there is no B only which is assigned in the function as argument. So as there is no argument of B which is given here, so it will return an error in print B saying that argument B is missing with no default. That is how exactly this is the case where you uh, lazy evaluation of function where you know, when the user is providing only one of the arguments. Uh, let us just check one by one. So, if you see, if I'm just closing this. So, if you want to run everything, all the lines of code together, go to uh, just, you know, that, uh, select everything and then click run. Now, as expected, you will see the new dot function a into b is 3 into 6, which is 18, because they are default, and 9 into 5 is 45, which is as expected shown here. And the corresponding variables along with their values will be shown and given to you in the uh, environment workspace. So that was all about it where, where I would explain where I've explained you about functions and all. Now, after, before delving into further, like, uh, you know, the data structures, which is in the upcoming video, I would like to also explain you single, uh, some single input, single output kind of function. There are different category of functions called single input and single output, where a single input is given a single output. Say, for example, area of a square. Area of a square is what? Pi r square. And that will take only a single argument or a single input, which is radius. Depending on the radius only, because pi value, we know it's 3.14. So, pi into r square. r is the only radius or the only input which you have to give. So, say, uh, let us like uh, hands-on create a, um, for example, a function. So, let's say this is a way in which you can, you know, create your own function, name of the function. You can give a equal to. Till now, we were making use of something like less than equal to hyphen. But instead of doing that, let's go with equal to. Because I told that's something but a different assignment operator only. And you have to assign with the keyword or the variable function. Radius. Because radius is the, uh, basically the name. The, uh, the, the name of the input argument. So, the name of the input argument. And area equal to pi into radius square. Now, pi can be 3.14 as well. Right, or it can, you can simply use pi also in R. Pi is nothing but pi, so you can make use of pi. And you're multiplying it, so pi into radius square. Radius square. How do you write square? You can just write power 2. Radius to the power of 2 is nothing but radius square. Go to the next line and return the area. This will be, after calculating the area of the circle, it will be returning the area of the circle in this line. Now, printing. Print area of circle 2. So, pi into 2 square is nothing but pi into 4, which is 3.14 into 4, which, is, which will be around uh, 12 point something, 12.5. Let's see what will be the output. Yes, 12.56637 is the expected output of your function here. This is nothing but single input, single output function, where there's a single input radius, which is provided, and the area of the circle is nothing but pi r square, which is calculated by this uh, body of your function over here. And the corresponding area of the circle, by providing this argument 2, uh, it will be taking at as radius, and the output will be the area of the circle which will be given to you over here as output 12.56637. Now, what about multiple input, multiple output? Now, if you don't have a single input, say uh, area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle takes length, width also, right? It takes length and the width also. Or say volume. Now, volume will take more than two parameters. It will take three parameters, of course. So, we will understand that how to deal with multiple input, multiple output functions. So let's say, let's do it for a rectangle and then go to volume 
uh, function. Now say if you want to find the area of a rectangle. So let's do that. Rectangle equal to function. Length comma width. I am denoting them by L and W only. Length and width. And then you know area equal to. What is the area of a rectangle? Area of a rectangle is length into width. Length into breadth. So L into W. You can do. And perimeter, uh, let's, okay, perimeter equal to 2 into L plus B. This is the perimeter. Okay, it's W because it's width and uh, area is L into W. And we can store the result. Result, uh, basically, let's now understand that there is an object called result, right, in, in uh, R. Now, if you want to get a list of the area and perimeter, because you want to store both the area and the perimeter in a single object called the result. Now, you can make use of the list. List is a data structure in R. This is just a basic data structure. I'll be delving into detail about the different data structures, data frames, and how exactly operations can be done in R in the next video. But I'm just making use of list over here. List is a data structure to store your answer. So let's say you want to store in area. So area, we can just give it like this. Area equal to area. Comma, perimeter, since you're storing the area and the perimeter. Perimeter equal to perimeter. And you can return the result. Since the result is storing both the area and the perimeter, you can return the result. So whenever you see multiple input, multiple output is there. Multiple output can be returned to you. And the uh, multiple output is nothing but storing both area and perimeter in a single variable only. And that single variable is the result variable, which is nothing but a list of the area and the perimeter separated by a comma. So that is how you can return multiple outputs was one of the way I was showing you. So you can res return the result only and then... Uh, since it's a list, let's name it as result list. Result list is equal to, you're calling the rectangle function here. This is how method invocation is done or method calling is done. So you can pass in any parameter, say 2 comma 3. So length is 2 and width is 3. The This is the input parameter. Now if you want to print the basically result list because that is uh, this rectangle. Well, let's correct the spelling of rectangle. Now, if you want to return the result list, the only the area, if you only want to return the area, not the perimeter, you can do this result list at area. This is some, nothing but the slicing operator, where you, if you want to return only the area, since it's a list and list consists of both area followed by a perimeter and then they are separated by commas. So, you can get the list of basically whatever value which is or the key which is present in the list can be sliced or uh, indexed by making use of the brackets now if you want to print the perimeter similarly you can do that result list and then in the bracket specify as perimeter let's run this entire thing as expected you will see the area over here as sixth perimeter as 10 because 2 into 3 is the area of rectangle, which is 6. The perimeter is 2 into length plus breadth, uh, length plus width or, or breadth. And uh, length is 2 and 3 is width. So 2 plus 3 is 5 and multiplied by 2 is 10. So as expected, you will get 10 over here. So this was how exactly you can make use of multiple input, multiple output functions. There are other types of functions like in, inline functions in R as well. There are different types of functions. Inline functions are nothing but everything you are passing as a single line. So let me give you an example of inline functions also before I conclude this video. So that you will get a ho over holistic view about entirely about how exactly the, uh, you know, the... Um, the different functions can be uh, used or uh, the, the different functions what all ex exist in R. So say you have a function, function of, um, let's say function of x, just naming it as function only, function of x, x square, um, okay, this, I'm using different, different mathematical functions like x square into 4 plus x divided by 3. 
Now let's print this inline function. Inline function is nothing but having all the functions in a single line. You know that it's something like whenever you're creating a R script file, loading it, executing it is a lot of work like we have seen. Uh, so sometimes what you want to do is you want to create a very small function. This is only one single line function uh, which is called as an inline function where you can use the function command with the argument x and then the expression of the function. So nothing but the argument over here is x function and then the argument x followed by the expression, expression of the function. So print f of 4 and print let's say f of minus 2 print 0. Let's see what exactly this is going to print or display as output. As expected you will see that on uh, giving 4 as the argument this uh, in the place of 4 uh, in the in the place of x 4 will be substituted and on substituting that the result of the function will be retrieved to you here at 65.333 and then minus 2 if you substitute in place of x then you will get 15.333 and on just providing 0 without anything you will just get a 0 only because anyway if you are multiplying 0 or even 0 divided by 3 is nothing but 0 and 0 square is also 0 so anything with 0 is going to give you a 0 as a result. So this is one of the way in which you can create inline functions and you can also pass arguments to functions in our language in three ways as I have told like you can pass them in the same order in the function or you can change the order of the uh, arguments also or if the arguments are not provided at all like in, uh, in the case of uh, you know, especially when you're talking about default values of the function, which can be used. If you're not, the user is not providing any arguments also. But if you are giving any default, say in the default, we're giving x is equal to 5. And the user in the next line is not, not even giving any argument. It's just saying print uh, f, print f of 0. Uh, just print f uh, without any argument over here. So it will just take, assume that value is 5 only. And in the last line, you will see 101.66 because it is assumed that when the user is not provided any argument, default argument of x equal to 5 or default argument to 5 will be taken and substituted in place of x. So that is nothing but lazy evaluation of functions in R. Also, we have understood that when we say, what do you mean by exactly by lazy is nothing but that if some arguments are missing in the function, they are still going to be executed as long as the execution does not involve those arguments. So this is nothing but that. So I hope I have made everything clear about multiple input, multiple output functions for you and how exactly you can use and define different functions. And in the next upcoming video, we'll be talking about the different data structures present in R, some of the operations of which can be performed in R. So stay tuned. And if you have any uh, doubts, please uh, drop them in the comment section. Have a good day. Thank you.